Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, and I think I've found the day of the Lord. Talking about that great and dreadful day that we hear about in the scripture. Today happens to be the Sabbath day where I'm at, and as expected on any Sabbath day, I believe I've gotten a revelation. Now, I'm over here in the book of James, or the Protoevangelium. This is actually found in the lost books of the Bible and the forgotten books of Eden. If you wanted to go and check out this book, I happen to be working on another project. You should see an image come up like this in a future video when we'll be talking about the days of some of these events. But as I was doing some research to put this presentation together, I happened across this verse over here in the Proto Evangelium. This is talking about the grandparents of our Messiah. His granddaddy was named Joachim. This would have been he who begat the mother Mary. Well, you see down here in verse 2, as it's talking about the days before he and his wife were ever given any child, and they were preparing to make an offering on the great day of the Lord, as it says there. And so what I plan to do is show you verses, not only from this book, but another book called the gospel of mary that makes a connection on when this day is and we're going to be looking at several scriptures from the old testament that helps tie this all together and actually prove that this is the great day of the lord that i'm going to show you here in this video now you're welcome to make comments i actually advise you to do so not only does it help our channel but it also goes a long way to helping in the understanding of what we're seeing here as we're able to communicate with one another and hear each other's thoughts on the subject but knowing that there will be some simply by looking at the title will only stop by this video to leave the comment that nobody knows the day or the hour let's go ahead and address this up front looking at the verses where we actually hear this there's only two verses that they get that from that nobody knows the day or the hour one of them is over here in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36 where it says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But when you look in the previous verse, you see that he's talking about the day in which the earth shall pass away. And if you know biblical prophecy, you know that the entire earth goes up in flames one day, maybe several hundred years from now. But the scripture never tells us exactly when that day is. And it definitely doesn't tell us the exact day nor the exact hour in which the earth will be destroyed. The other verse that they're getting that from that nobody knows the day or the hour is Matthew chapter 25 and verse 13, where it says, Wherefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So these are two times in the scripture that we're told that nobody knows the day or the hour. But as you can see, Neither of these verses are relevant to this discussion because we're not talking about the return of the Son of Man nor the destruction of the earth. We're talking about the great and dreadful day of the Lord, which is a completely different event altogether. Many of those who want to use this phrase and say nobody knows the day or the hour, what they're doing is they're combining all of the end time events into one event and claiming that nobody knows it. But you got to know that there are several things that we're waiting for in the end times. We have a great earthquake, which we're going to talk about in this video. We have the return of the lawless one. We have the second coming of our Messiah. We have the fall of Babylon, the creation of the temple, all kinds of events that go on in the end times. So that's why we won't be paying much attention to those guys down there. Many of them are not astute on the scripture enough to speak on a matter and only really use that phrase to justify their own disobedience in this time. So let's just go on. Back over here in the book of James, verse 2 says, Now the great day of the Lord drew nigh, and the children of Israel offered their gifts. And Reuben stood over against him, saying, It is not lawful for thee to offer thy gifts first, forasmuch as thou hast gotten no seed in Israel. So here it is, the great day of the Lord, that he's about to make this offering. Well, when we come to the book called the Gospel of the Nativity of Mary, which is talking about the birth of Mary, we see the same story mentioned down there in chapter 2, where 
it says, And it came to pass that the festival of dedication was at hand. Wherefore also Jehoiachim went up to the Jerusalem with some men of his own tribe. And we see down here that Jehoiachim's offering was despised. So this is actually talking about the same event, the same exact day. And this is what's allowing us to understand the connection between the day of the Lord, the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and the festival of dedication. What we're putting together from these two books and these two verses, the great day of the Lord and the festival of dedication is actually the same thing. That's what the festival of dedication is, is the feast of Hanukkah. Hanukkah means dedication. This festival was instituted during the Maccabean period because it was necessary to rededicate the temple after it had been defiled by Antiochus Epiphanes, who sacrificed a pig on the altar on Christmas Day, which, according to the sacred celestial calendar, fell on the 24th day of the ninth month when he performed that abomination. But let's come over to the book of Haggai in chapter 2 and see what also happened on the 4 and 20th day of the ninth month. As we see down there in verse 20, this is Haggai getting a prophecy from our father, telling him to speak unto Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. So it is like he's telling him here is that he's going to shake the earth on the 4 and 20th day of the ninth month. He says in verse 22 how he's going to overthrow the kingdoms and will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of heaven and will overthrow the chariots and those that ride on them and the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by their sword and his brother. This is the great day of the Lord. And he's making a connection between it and the 24th day of the ninth month. And I have been working on this for a while, but I really haven't had the scripture as I do today to back all of this up. So there was a lot of speculation involved. But you see that in the year 2024, once again, Hanukkah starts on Christmas Day. Just like it did back there with the abomination of desolation that Antiochus Epiphanes did there in the temple. So, this I believe. And you're welcome to put your comments down below on what you believe. But this I believe is when we can expect the prophetic fulfillment of what Haggai was talking about on the 24th day of the ninth month. I believe that we're going to see the great and dreadful day of the Lord on December the 25th of the year 2024. And this corresponds to what we see over in the book of Isaiah in chapter 24, which also talks about the great and dreadful day of the Lord. You see down there in verse 19 where he says, The earth will utterly be broken down. The earth will be clean dissolved. The earth moved exceedingly. That is that great earthquake that we hear about over in the book of Revelation. It says that the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. That's the pole shift. The reversal of our electromagnetic field is actually going to cause the entire planet to wobble back and forth. Just like it says there. But anyway, when we come back up to verse 16, he's giving us hints on when this will be. He says, from the uttermost part of the earth... Have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous? And this is referring to our Christian brothers here who are singing songs of glory and righteousness. But you look, he goes on to say, But I said, My leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dread treacherously. Yeah, the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. So if these people are singing songs of glory and righteousness, why is our Heavenly Father, hallowed be his name, speaking on his leanness and saying, Woe unto me? It's because, as he says here, the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. So, you think on this. When is this the case? When do you have people who are singing praises to our Father, giving glory to him, talking about righteousness, but yet dealing treacherously at the same time? That's Christmas. The most devilish holiday of them all. 
the pagan festival where they celebrate the birth of the sun. Many of our Christian brothers who are unaware of the pagan festivals will be down there in the church singing praises to our father on Satan's day. And then he goes on to say how on this day that we're going to see all of this destruction, even a great shaking of the earth. We get another hint about this over in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, where it's talking about the two prophets who will lie dead in the street. You see there in verse 10, how it's saying that they are making merry and sending gifts to one another. That's Christmas time. And when we look down in verse 13, it says, and that same hour was there a great earthquake. So here again, telling us that this earthquake, the great earthquake that we hear about, was actually going to occur on or around Christmas, just like Isaiah said. And when we put that together with what we saw over in the book of Haggai and saying that this is all going to happen at the beginning of the Feast of Hanukkah, it all makes sense. I believe that we can expect the great and dreadful day of the Lord on Christmas of the year 2024 which lines up with the other project that I was working on saying that that's the eve of the Day of Atonement. But I'll be covering that in another class. So make sure you have your bell notification button pushed so you can see when that video comes out. Our Father is downloading lots of information to us just like he promised us. Knowledge is increasing in these end times. And on this channel, we're sharing it with you as fast as we can. So make sure you're subscribed, share this video, leave us a comment, pray for us, and shalom.